Hello, everyone. All right, recording has started. I think I'm good. So what we're going to do again is we're going to take this and we're going to turn it into this movie poster because your next project is to be to be com uh, positing images into a movie poster. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this guy out. There's m many ways we could cut him out. We could use some sort of lasso tool and try to draw a little selection. We could use a magic wand and attempt to get the colors around him, but that doesn't seem to be doing very much good. I could bring this tolerance up. Um, but I don't think it's going to be exactly what I want. So I'm going to try something else instead. I'm going to use the quick selection tool. Using the quick mask selection tool, I'm going to go ahead and just paint this in. If you find that things aren't looking right, maybe they're looking like this. Check the size of your brush. Make sure it's big enough. Um, hold down shift to add and hold down alt to subtract. So if I accidentally get this little section, hold down alt and get rid of it. And then come in and just make sure you get all of the edges here. You're going to want to be uh, careful and kind of just maybe zoom in and get all these little spots that you might have missed. Let me get this area down here, all over here. And all these little spots. I'm not going to be super careful because I do want to uh, honor your time, but you should take you know a good five minutes to make sure you get all these little spots. Um, it's better to cut off a little bit of his hair than to have any green. You really don't want to have any green showing. So as much as possible, um, avoid that because it'll look weird. And a little bit of this area. That's probably good enough for now. Let's move on to the next step. So now that I have a pretty good selection, I'm simply going to create a layer mask by clicking on this. Sorry, this one. If you find that your uh, quick selection tool is not working correctly, make sure that you have all of these um, settings. Uncheck sample all layers. You can actually have auto enhance checked. It doesn't really matter. All right. Now that we have a nice cut out of him, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. I want to get rid of this watermark, Wasted Abandoned. So I'm going to double click on the background and click OK. That unlocks the background. You can see the difference. Double click, OK. It unlocks the background. I'm now going to use a selection tool, doesn't really matter which one, to select this little watermark. With it selected, making sure I'm on the bottom layer, I'm going to go to Edit, Fill. And I'm going to make sure that content aware is selected here. That will fill in this little area. It's gone. And it looks pretty seamless. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move Death Guy. And maybe shrink him a little bit. He'll need to be smaller in the end. But for now, I can leave him about this size. Push him right about here. Make sure he's on the bottom. You don't want him hovering in the top. Otherwise, he looks like his legs were cut off. So there we go. I'm going to go on to the standard orange layer. I'm going to make this a lighten mode. And you can see now that it looks, the, the black parts disappear. You see just the explosion. Now I'm going to uh, create a curves layer so that we can get this background to match him. As you can see, he's pretty orange compared to the background, which is a little bit blue. So I'm going to create an adjustment layer, curves. I'm going to bring up my reds. and bring down my blues so that the colors just match a little bit better. Maybe I'll bring my reds up a little higher and my blues down just a little lower. There we go. So now you can see that with the adjustment layer it brings the colors a little bit more consistent. Make sure the adjustment layer is here not up here on the top where it will affect everything. The next thing I'm going to do is create another adjustment layer, a curves, and I'm going to bring the brightness all the way up to here. I'm going to then uh, take the paint bucket tool and I'm going to paint in that curves mask right there so that you can't see the curves. If your paint bucket does not work, make sure that contiguous is checked and all layers is unchecked. Now using a paintbrush. I'm going to, I don't have my tablet here, so I can't be as careful as you guys can. 
I'm going to, um, with a fairly low flow, about 12%, 100% opacity, and a soft brush, which means the hardest should be low. I'm going to paint here. Again, I would recommend using your tablet. And what I'm doing here is I'm showing off the reflections that would be uh, pointing towards the explosion. They should be a lot brighter on those sides. Holding down shift to keep my line straight, I'm just coming in here and doing this. Go a little bigger here. Uh, let's try that again. There we go. On the bottom part, I want a huge brush. Maybe not quite that big, like this. And I want to just make sure that that explosion on the top and the bottom really shines through. And you can see the pillars. So you'll notice my mask right now is mostly black. But there are some white areas where I just let it shine through. Let's see the before and after. So we were like this. And now we're like this, which looks a lot more realistic. The next thing I want to do is just add a little bit of shine on him. So I'm going to go to his layer. I'm going to create a curves adjustment. And I'm going to make sure it only attaches to him. Uh, let me bring this all the way up. By clicking on this button, it'll only attach to the next layer underneath. We're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to paint bucket this black so that it does hide completely that uh, adjustment layer. And then using white paint, I'm going to bring in that shine just on the edges because right now there's no shine on him from the explosion and there should be. You have a little bit of a shine on him from the window and that's fine. We'll go ahead and leave that there. So now we can see the before and after. Subtle. Just brightens him up a little bit. Um, I kind of overdid it here so I can just use some black paint to tone that down. Next thing I want to do is I uh, think I'm ready to add my title. So I'm going to use the text tool and I'm going to put here in all caps death guy you might decide that you need to adjust some of the settings on here you want to go up to window character and you might decide that it's uh, too small so you can adjust the size you might decide that it's too far apart or close together so you can adjust uh, your letting and you might want to adjust the tracking and the kerning as well. I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, D right here. I'm going to push it over a little bit. So that the E, that line on the E matches up with the line on the U. Nice straight line. And it doesn't matter what color you choose because we're going to do some more to it. Get on your text layer and go to layer, layer style. We're going to do an, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to do a gradient overlay. I would like you to choose this color, gradient. So if you just click on the drop down here, you can choose, sorry, this one. You could choose that color. Make sure it's on normal at 100% opacity. We're then going to add a drop shadow. If you want to go ahead and just use my settings, feel free to pause it right now. You might have to adjust a little bit. Um, this, by the way, this text, this font is called Cool Vetica. I don't think you guys have it on your computers. Uh, it's a pretty cool font, but do whatever font works for you. You could also play with things like bevel and emboss if you want to give it a, like a chiseled edge. Um, and you can see, oops, I'm on the wrong one. If I go to bevel and emboss, you can see what that would look like if I adjust the size and stuff. Just kind of gives it that chiseled edge kind of look. It's just kind of cool. Play with anything you want here. It's fine. All right, once I've done that, Last thing I need to do is I want to crop it so that it looks like a movie poster. A uh, movie poster is 24 by 36 inches, but you'll see that a lot of things are going to get cut off if I do that. So let me go ahead and hit escape. And I'm going to uh, shrink him down. Now when I shrink him, I also need to make sure I select this layer. Otherwise, that glow will disappear. So I hold down shift to select both of those layers. And I'm going to shrink him down to maybe about here. He's pointing right at the explosion. Then I'm going to go ahead and uh, with my text tool, using Control T, shrink it down a little bit, move it, uh, and let's try using that crop tool again. That's much better. 24 by 36. Hit Enter, and there's our crop. And um, last thing you might want to do if you have time. 
Go on the internet, search for movie poster text, copy and paste some movie poster text. You can make it white or black. Uh, I'll go ahead and just shrink this, I mean enlarge this, bring it down here. Set the mode to lighten and I'm going to go up and just adjust image adjustments curves to brighten it up. Not beautiful, but it'll work for now. And there you go. In IMAX, you guys can now experience Death Guy. And that's pretty much it. So uh, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe.